Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the fifth episode about creating games in HTML5. So, so far we got um, this game and this is the code for it. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. But long story short, we got our player, we got a list of enemies. So we create the enemies one by one manually and then we add it into the enemy list. And then when we want to draw everything, we do a for loop. So we'll loop through all the enemy in our enemy list and we update each of them individually. So my goal in this video is to optimize our code by using constrictor. So one problem we have is right here. When we create enemies, we need to type all this line of code and we need to repeat ourselves. So when we create an enemy, um, it takes a lot of lines and we copy paste the thing when we want to create another enemy and copy paste once again. And like I said, at in the very first episode, if you repeat yourself, then you're doing something wrong. You should be making a function that does the repetition for you. And this is exactly what we will do. So we will create a new function and the role of this new function will be to add an enemy to our game. So in order to do that, we will simply create a function that we will call enemy. And what it will do is just exactly what we have right here. There we go. And if we call enemy, right there, it's exactly the same than what we had before. We call enemy, it goes here, it creates the enemy tree, and then it added to the enemy list at the slot E3. So nothing has changed. Now let's say that we, um, let's modify this a little bit. Once again, let's, um, let's put right here ID equal E3. Let's put it that way, and then replace all the E3 by ID right there and right there. Once again, this is exactly the same than what we had before. Now let's put ID as a parameter and put E3 as the first parameter when we call the function enemy. It's once again exactly the same. So what I just did there is very useful and you will be doing this pretty much all the time is passing as a parameter the values of the attributes. And we have done it, I've just done it for um, the ID, but you can also do it for the X. So you pass as a parameter the X value like this and you put it there. So um, when you call this function, this right there goes here and then X will be replaced by 250. So it's exactly the equivalent. Now we can also do this for the X, the, the Y, we can do it for the speed X and we can do it for speed Y. So there we go something like this Oops. and we need to pass as a parameter the different values like that. So now if we want to create the second enemy like this, instead of typing all this code, which takes like 10 lines or something, we just copy paste this, replace the ID for two, replace this is the the X, this will be the Y, then the speed X, and then the speed Y will be minus 15. So it's exactly the equivalent of what we add. And then here, the equivalent would be E1, this, this, 15, and 10. So now we can remove this part too. And let's just check how this looks in the browser. So as usual, you want to open Google Chrome drag the file um, game that you have created, game.html, place it there. And as you can see, it's exactly the same than what we had before. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is the fact that I kept using enemy3 inside my function. And you're probably wondering, um, won't they overwrite each other? Won't the enemies overwrite each other because I keep using the same uh, variable name? And the answer is no, and it's because of scoping. So if you open um, Google Chrome once again in your page and you type enemy tree, so I want to know the variable, um, the value of enemy tree, and you press enter, it will say enemy tree is not defined. Uh, even though right there we just say a hey, var enemy tree equals something. Why doesn't the browser know what is the value of enemy tree? And it's because of scoping. So now I'll try my best to explain scoping, but keep in mind that it's a very complex topic. I will try my best to make it as simple as possible. So when you create a variable, there are two different um, ways or contexts um, 
when you create a variable. It can be outside of a function, for example, enemy list, and it can be inside a function. For example, in our case, enemy tree, the var is inside the function enemy. And they will act um, really differently. So if you create a variable outside of a function, the variable will be permanent. They are also known as global variable. If you create a variable inside a function, it will be temporary. So it will be destroyed when the function ends. So when we reach the bottom, enemy tree no longer exists. And if we want to keep the value of M enemy tree, because this is important content, we need to be able to access it at some point, we will need to link it with a permanent variable. And this is exactly what we do right here. We got our um, enemy list, which is um, permanent. And what we do is we will link our temporary or local variable um, to our permanent, so we'll save its value. So now for the rest of the video, I'll be working on a collision system. Um, so when you want to test the collision between two entities, um, the code that you will have to write really depends on the shape of those entities. So the main common one, common shapes are points, circle, and rectangle. And those are the ones I will cover in this video series. So if you want to test um, the collision between a point and a point, there's a formula for that. A point and a circle, it's a different formula. A point with a rectangle, different formula, a rectangle, rectangle, circle, point. I guess you get the point. Um, but in our case, our player is a point because it has a X and Y and our enemy is also a point because it also has a X and Y. We could add a width to our player and consider it as a rectangle. We could um, consider our player as a circle, but for this video, I'll simply consider um, enemy and player to be a point. And in order to test if they are colliding, um, we will test the distance. So we will get the distance between um, player and enemy. And if it's below, let's say 10, then we will say it's colliding. So now what we need to do is to create a function that returns the distance between two entities and the two entities will be placed as parameter. And this is how your function should look. So the name is get distance between entity. Um, there are two parameters, the first entity and the second entity. And what this function does, it returns the distance between the two. So I won't really, I'll try my best to cover how it works. We get the difference in X for the two entities, the difference in Y between the two entities. Then we simply apply Pythagore. Um, so this is math square root. So it returns the square root of whatever you put as a parameter. And this will return the distance. You don't really have to understand how this function works. What you need to really understand is how to use it. That's the, the, key, the key part in programming. So now that we have this function, we want to create another function that tests if two entities are colliding. And this is how your function should look um, right there. So test collision entity, it's the name. It has two parameters, the two entities you want to test if they are colliding, and it needs to return true or false. True if it's colliding, false if it's not. So first we get um, the distance between our two entities, we place it in the a variable distance and then we test if the distance is let's say 5 then 5 is less than 10 so it's true so it will return yes they are colliding because their distance is less than 10 and if it's bigger then it will return false so now that we have a system to know if two entities are colliding we will use it in our main loop to know if the player is colliding with one of the enemies Let's just remove that and go down here. So this function update is called every single frame. We um, delete everything that was drawn on the Canva. Then we update every entity, um, every, we update every monster in our list, looping through the list by using a loop for. Um, so we update them and then we update the player. What we are going to do here is for every enemy in our list, so this code right there is called for every single enemy. We will test, we will create a variable called is colliding, which will be able, equal to collision between the player and the enemy list key. And then we will test if is colliding. So if they are colliding, we will do a console log colliding like this. 
So now let's just check in the real game how it goes. So one thing I will change here, um, distance 10 is kind of small. I will change it for 30. So just update your Google Chrome and here's the P. When it goes um, over the letter E, you will see colliding. So exactly as we wanted. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. In the next video, what I will be doing is adding a HP bar to our player. So when he collides, he loses HP. And then after that, I will add interactivity to our game. So instead of bouncing randomly, the P letter will be controlled with arrow keys. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.